Beverly and I are currently in Arklow and there's this really handy arc just around it so uh, you can really tell where you are. Um, now just outside uh, Arklow is a bank and we could either go uh, to the south of the bank which would put our course like that or we can go north um, from to get round the bank. Now, if we go south, that will add an awful. It will add about two hours extra to the passage as we go from the south up to here, and you don't get a choice. But if you go north from the passage, we can either go um, to Carnarvon Bar or to Hollyhead, and it's in a much better position for both. So we're going to go north uh, initially. Now, what we, Beverly and I were looking at uh, was how the tidal streams work and things like that. Now, our first thing was sort of like, well, can we get over in a day? So we were leaving here at Arklow at the first um, crack of dawn, going, unfortunately, uh, going with the tide... Uh, and then going across but it would actually put us in to say this anchorage here at 12 one o'clock in the morning so a really really difficult time to anchor um Beverly and I prefer to be anchoring in the daylight or something like that the other option is to think about the tides uh, at Carnarvon Bar because you've got a tidal gate there and um, basically, we'd want to arrive three hours early so that we've got plenty of time to get over the bar. And it gives you wiggle room. Um, but that would mean that it's basically a night passage. There's no way that we can arrive, leave here in the day and arrive there in the day. It's just not going to happen. So what we're doing is we're leaving... Later on in the afternoon, basically, we're having lunch and then we're getting ready to go. Um, and then that will basically mean that we have a night passage and we arrive in the morning. So once we actually made a decision as to how we were going to travel, uh, we wrote out a passage plan. And you see here we're going north and then we're going over to Carnarvon Bar. This is our wonderful little diagram. Uh, we've got waypoints um so that we can basically check uh, how our progress and then we've also put the waypoints there they are onto the chart uh so that again we can check our progress as we're going across now we've um only put our progress at four knots uh because although there'll be times that we'll be going faster than that there'll be times that we'll be going slower because the tide isn't really going to assist us particularly much. And we'll just see how, where we go and how we get to uh, also we're expecting the other end. we're expecting very light winds. We are expecting light winds. So um, we'll be, might be motoring, but we have got loads and loads of diesel. So if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. Haven't done anything with the kicker either. few seconds the sound that I really really love to hear is gonna happen so let's go to it hey engine is off but isn't that fantastic the sails are up um, we've got a foul tide at the moment. Yes, we have. Um, but what we try to do is um, we're going out on the last hour or hour of the foul tide. So um, we'll have one hour against and one hour with. That's the plan. But we're still going at 4.1 knots. Yes. The 
engine back on and um, we just had a little excitement on Salty Lass that quite frankly we could have done without um, because um, we were avoiding pots of which as always there's plenty and um, we thought we'd left the pots plenty to starboard and then all of a sudden we could see this floating line between the two sets of pots and it was like oh my goodness you know so I, I killed the propeller as quick as I could the oh. pot went over the top and we saw the pots move so the keel did get caught but it didn't tangle the prop but honest to goodness I can tell you now my heart is absolutely racing and um, I'm still a bit Woo. But no, the, the wind has died, so that's why we've got the engine on. Wind's down to three knots. <laughs> Not really a lot of use to us. No. <laughs> Arklow behind us and you, you can see it there and I'm sorry to be leaving so early and I'm sorry we're going because I think we were just starting to have a really really good time. We were. Um, we definitely will be back because I actually first started wanting to go around Ireland when I was in my 20s. <laughs> well there you go. Hopefully you'll finish it before your, your time is up. <laughs> Yeah, I would like to complete that little task, but uh, <laughs> before I'm 60, say. <laughs> you old bad. I know. <laughs> but uh, no, we will be back, but uh, goodbye, Ireland, for now. Yes, so um, at the minute the uh, conditions are very, very benign, um, so that is at least the good side of it. It would be nice if a bit more wind. Yeah. Uh, and then we wouldn't have to motor, or just enough maybe even to motor seal and just, you know, get there in plenty of time. Hmm. Yeah. But, I, um, I, I wouldn't mind getting to the anchorage at three in the morning, that wouldn't bother me. No, and then we can anchor and then... Three in the morning, the sun will be coming up. <laughs> Beverly and I are laughing at the moment. We're having a little race. Is it going to be the rain that hits us first, or are we going to get to the waypoint first? In seven minutes time. <laughs> seven minutes. Well, the result is in. The rain came first. Okay. We are two minutes away from the waypoint, so I'm thinking that's good enough. Let's get the course change in before I get soaked to the skin. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. We had planned our route to pass through an area clear of overfalls, which were north and south of where we were going. But the real world had other ideas. halfway over and mostly it's been motored because of the wind has been so light. When we do get wind we use the uh, sails as much as we can so we've used, we've used wind where we can, we've used the motor for most of it, we've used the tide to give us a push 
and we've been through some of the worst overfalls we've seen in quite a long time but on the plus side we're an hour ahead of schedule according to our waypoints and that's good news uh, but anyway it's getting dark now so this is probably the last report for today and um, hopefully if everything goes to plan we'll see you tomorrow morning from North Wales <laughs> after what I would describe as a particularly unsatisfactory passage in that oh come on we did do some sailing in the middle of it I know but it was a very nasty lumpy bumpy passage with a lot of overfalls which we'll discuss later but we're almost at Carnarvon Bar and uh, that's our next task isn't it yeah um, Beverly uh, won the toss <laughs> <laughs> so she's gonna take us in but I took us into our clue and that, it has to be said that was that, a bit of a session that was a bit of a session so this is Beverly's session now uh, oh, oh mine's less of a session than yours was <laughs> but it'll still be difficult but anyway um, but we've got to the bottom of the the Carnarvon Pass uh, bay. bay a little bit early but that's all to the good as far as we're concerned We've uh, finally made it to Carnarvon and I think we're <laughs> heartily glad to be in. Um, we actually got here early enough that uh, we had to wait for the flap gate to come down so I'm afraid that meant the camera ran out of charge which is why you're not getting to see our entry into Carnarvon. That's just the way it rolls sometimes. But we're in now and we're rafted up and uh, oh, that was a bit of a passage. The um, the overfalls and things like that caught us a bit by surprise because on our electronic charts our little Garmin here doesn't show them at all. Navionics shows them to the north of us. Um, when we look very 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 closely at our sea map charts they are actually marked as water turbulence but the best one of the lot was the paper chart which had them marked and had a lovely clear gap and through two sets and we thought you know what if we go through there if there's any it'll be minimal. Maybe it was minimal, but it didn't feel like it. Anyway, we're in now, so it's time for the kettle on and um, we're going to have a relax as soon as I get out of this. Mm -hmm. 